Hey everybody, this is Leslie, and you're watching Midlife and Nailing It. Today I'm so excited because I'm participating for the second year in a row in the One Pot Meal Collab hosted by Stephanie from Creatively Mrs. Me and Wani from Wani's House. I will put a link to these lovely ladies' channels in my description box below, as well as a link to the playlist. I'll be making a crock pot chicken and dumplings that is to die for. Let's get started. Okay guys, so we're gonna make some crock pot chicken and dumplings today. And this is the easiest recipe, but it is so good, you guys. I highly recommend it. It's so easy, I don't even know if this video will be 10 minutes or more. It's going to probably be less than that, but I really wanna share it, especially on this collab because it's that awesome. So the first thing I always do when cooking with the crock pot, as long as I have some in the house, is I use these slow cooker liners. Uh, there are various brands, but I'm just using the Kroger brand here. I highly recommend doing this when using your crock pot. It just makes life a lot easier, clean up a lot easier. It makes for an easy day if you're busy using a liner, using your crock pot. So let's go ahead and get going here. Okay guys, so we're just gonna cut up an onion. And so since I am uh, making a super fast crock pot meal, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the technique that I use to cut up onion. So what I do is I just come on one end, I don't peel it first, and I whack off the one end. If some of the stuff falls off while I'm cutting, I just get it the heck out of the way. And then I cut off the other end and then I take my knife and I just roll it and just let it like the first layer of the onion. And if it goes a little deeper than that, that's okay. And then I get the first layer and I just do this. Okay, then the next thing that I do is I just cut the onion in half. I put this part of the onion straight on my cutting board so that it's not wobbling around because when things are wobbling around, that's when people get cut. And so I'm going at it from this side, not this side, and I'm just cutting like this. And you're supposed to do your fingers like this. I am not a knife person, but I know that, but old habits died hard. I'm midlife and nailing it. I've never cut my fingers this way, so I'm gonna continue to probably do this. I do it without thinking when I'm cooking, you know? I just go for it and always have, and it is what it is. So then I'm going, you're gonna hold on tightly to it, and you're gonna cut the other way. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up three cloves of garlic. You can use garlic powder instead, or if you don't like garlic, you can leave this part out, or if you only like a little, that's up to you. It's your kitchen, right? Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I cut a, a garlic clove. So I'm gonna put these to the side. So here's my garlic clove. I've not peeled it or anything. I do the same thing like I did with the onion. I cut off both ends. And you know, it, it is a sticky experience, I'm not gonna lie. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take whatever knife you're using and you're just gonna smash it. And then the peel comes right off, guys, like magic. Okay guys, so I've got my garlic all peeled now. Now I can come through with my knife and I usually go through garlic a few times because I want it to be the littlest pieces possible. Okay, so I've got my first slice going and then I'm just gonna kind of like mound it up and like cut it smaller until I've got the pieces as little as I'd like. Okay, so I've got my onion roughly chopped, my garlic chopped up the way I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my cutting board and just do this guys. I make life as easy. If there's shortcuts, I have found it by now. True story. I went ahead this week and grabbed these frozen Kroger chicken breasts because they were on sale for $5.99. You can use whatever chicken you happen to have on hand here. You want it to be uh, no bone. It could be thighs. It could be unfrozen chicken breast. I'm throwing frozen in there. It'll just take, you know, a bit longer to cook than if they weren't frozen. Um, but usually about four hours, they're ready to shred. 
when I put frozen chicken breast in my crock pot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put, they're like this size. I'm gonna go ahead and I made a little bed with my onion and stuff and I'm gonna put four of these in. So there's one, two, you know what guys, I just changed my mind. I'm gonna go ahead and just put three in because these are pretty big and that covers the whole bottom of my crock pot and that's plenty of chicken for the chicken and dumplings we're going to make. So I'm using three of my frozen chicken breast here. So, you know, this is just your average crock pot. So you want this much chicken, about. If you had a little less than that or a little more, it isn't gonna hurt anything. I've got my large eight cup Purex uh, pouring container thing, whatever the heck you wanna call it. So you're just gonna add a can of chicken broth. I'm just using the Great Value brand. You can use whatever brand you'd like or you can do the uh, bullion. You know, I think it's like one cube per cup of water. Um, you could make that up and throw it in here or actually you could throw in your water and your bullion you wouldn't have to make it up pour it in your crock pot let the crock pot do the work to that I'm gonna add uh, two cans of cream of chicken soup okay guys so I'm gonna add I don't know about that much salt so that's about a teaspoon um, but I mean I'm sure if you've cooked enough you know how much salt and pepper you guys like um, and so we like pepper at our house so I probably just added more than what you might want to add I do a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half or so I have some thyme here this is kind of how I cook guys so uh, probably a teaspoon of thyme and then I'm gonna just whisk this together sometimes when I'm making something that's got um, some kind of a mixture that goes in it I do like to incorporate it first I think it turns out a little bit better so I'm just gonna go ahead and add my mixture into my crock pot I'm gonna throw on my lid and I'm going to cook it on high for about four hours and then I'll show you what we do next I almost forgot to show you what I was using here I almost just started you know throwing everything into the crock pot. Um, so I'm just using these Great Value Jumbo Biscuits. It's the refrigerated biscuits. You can use any brand you'd like. Um, and then I'm gonna cut these into fourths. All right guys, so my chicken is finished. I just kinda tested it. I used my little forks to see if it shredded easily. That's how you know. Um, and then I, oh, you're gonna have to back up. Ooh. Okay, so I just have my forks in here and I am shredding my chicken all up. And this smells so good. I was about to say. Oh, so, so good. And it is somewhat thick now, guys, um, but not as thick as you'd want dumplings to be. But when you add your biscuits, that's what thickens it up. It's like a little amazing thing that happens in the crock pot, a little magic. Okay guys, so I just have a frozen bag of peas and carrots here. You could of course chop up your own. If you decided to do that, you need to put your carrots in in the very beginning, not at the end. And then your peas you would add at the end. Let me go ahead and get these in here. And I'm gonna stir them in. And then I'm gonna drop my biscuits in. So you just drop them in, just like you would real dumplings. You don't wanna like put them all in at one time because they'll go together just like real dumplings. So you kinda wanna spread them out. And then next what you wanna do is like submerge them into your liquid. You want them completely coated with your liquid. This is so good, you guys. I'm not even kidding you. I can't believe how easy and good this is. Okay, so I pop my lid back on and you're gonna let this cook about another hour to an hour and a half. The way you'll know it's done is when your biscuits are done and they kind of float up to the top. Some of them get a little crispy. It's heaven. Um, yeah, so I'll show you what this all looks like when it's finished. All right, guys, so this is done. Oh, it smells so good, you guys. So this is what it looks like when it's done. See it, how it's kind of brown on the edges? 
And I'm just telling you this because if you um, stop cooking it too soon and your biscuits aren't done, um, they'll be, you know, doughy. But let's look closer. So when you push this, guys, you can just tell when it's done. You can feel it. If it's mushy at all, it needs to go a bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get this in a bowl and I will show you what that looks like. Okay guys, so this is what the crock pot chicken and dumplings look like. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at that. So delicious. I will tell you this, from experience, the last time I made this, um, you're going to want to let it cool down. The inside of those dumplings are like an inferno, and I burnt the roof of my mouth the last time, so I am going to have patience, even though the house has smelled so good this entire time. Uh, that's my last tip for you with this dish. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.